walk with me. Oh, Yahweh, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. Oh, Yahweh, my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, and let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in thy dust, Selah. Arise, O Yahweh, in thy anger, lift up thyself because of the rage of my enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about for their sakes, therefore return thou on high. O Yahweh shall judge the people, judge me. O Yahweh, according to my righteousness, according to mine integrity that is mine. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the jest for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Translation intentions. My defenses of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword, and he hath bent his bow, and hath made it ready. And he hath prepared for him instruments of death. He hath ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he that travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He hath made a pit, and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealings shall come upon him, come down upon his own plate or pate. I will praise Yahweh according to the, his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Most High, even Yahuwah. <laughs> Most High. Yes, all praises to the Most High, even him who have created all things. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those of our fathers who have served him. Yes, we give God the glory and the praise for this beautiful day. And also, deliver me from the hands of the evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seed forever, that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore, jubilees. 12 verse 20. Yes, yes, yes. Those of you on TikTok because of the political things that are happening and soon it will be gone. But the fact is you can also tune in to Mr. Clay, YouTube. I'm Mr. Clay on YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon. Go over there and subscribe. Even if you stay on TikTok, just go over there and subscribe that, that you can walk with me. Yes, we walk together. It's not that I'm trying to tell you anything new, for we all go into the context of the scripture that we're reading. Yes, the context. We're not talking about precepts. There's a precepts to every scripture. In other words, whether it is in the law, commandments, statutes, and judgments of the Most High or not. Those are precepts. Then you have concepts, context, all these things we have. Yes, pretexts. All these things, I mean, you, you have to really understand the meaning. Go into your dictionaries. It's right there. It's English language that we're speaking. And each language has a law, basically the same law. Who, where, when, where, and how, and why. And then they have different things that they, clauses and phrases and what have you. Okay? We have to learn the laws. If you can understand the laws of English, then you'll understand there's a law to every language. And some of us, we, we know the laws of English, English, should I say. But let us look up and, and investigate things before we go, come to a conclusion or our own uh, conception or inception or whatever we would call it. Now, 
we're going to say thank God for those of you that have come and you have joined us and been with us from the beginning. We thank God for you. We give God the praise and glory for you. Yes, glory to the Most High. Yes, 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 your knowledge and your info have been just pumped up. And we thank God for you. And those of you that have entered in after that and there's about, we thank God for you too also. That you have also have inherited a lot of information that have come through books that have, they have said, well, these books we don't need. But yet you have found out something about the Most High in these things. And those of you that have just subscribed, we thank God for you too. Yes, some of you have come over from TikTok and some of you have also have caused yourself to even come in and you're, you're, you're catching up, you're getting it, and you're trying to just go move forward in the Most High and the laws of the Most High, which he have commanded us to do. And then we thank God for those of you that are about to subscribe, and we give God the glory for you. We call those things that are not as though they are. Yes. And we're in the book of Jasher. Yes, the book of Jasher. We're in the book of Jasher. Yes, the book of Jasher, and we're in chapter 18. Chapter 18. Now, we, we, we're about to get into some things about Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, there are some, you might hear the washing machine spinning in the background, either way. But anyway, in the background, we have uh, of this text, Sodom and Gomorrah. There's, there's some videos of where they have found some salt and some salt and sulfur, you know, sulfur pellets and things that have come from them. And also, we also the real Jerusalem. You know, it's it's about it's about you know truth on the streets or something like that, where you have this this you know the guy he's a he's a uh, he calls himself a Nazareth or Rastafari. He, he's also a very good gentleman, and so he he explains with scripture about the temple area in Telerad. It's on YouTube. All you have to do is look up the real Jerusalem and you'll see him in the daylight pointing with another guy who is actually sponsoring the video. But anyway, with that I can say from, I'm going to start right here. No, Israel is not in America. Israel is not in South Africa. Israel is not in Kenya. No, it's not there. There is no proof. You have no biblical standing there. You have a, you not even have a video. No proof. The graves that the people that you say you haven't saw. Go to that video. You said where where is David buried? Where this is all a hoax? No, it's not. Go to the video and watch it. The graves are there. And if you have any if you have any gumption about yourself to really want to know, go to tell that. Set up an appointment and go. Yes, if it's worth that much to you, go. Yes, go and see that this place is city of David, Jerusalem, that valley surrounded by mountains, everything that the scripture have described. It's there. And it's right there, that whole peninsula there. That whole thing, what they call Arabia, Yemen and all that, that's all Israel. They have occupied all that area. The land of the Philistines, the Canaanites, Berizzites, Hizzites, Jebusites, Gerizites, all that were in there. They weren't supposed to be there, but God delivered. Now, let us get into, the, into this reading and lesson. Verse 5 of, verse, of chapter 18 of the book of Jasher, 18th chapter of Jasher, verse 5. And he said unto the them if now I have found he's talking to the angels this is Abram talking to the angels or messengers he said to them now if I found favor now the other English language would say grace see they, they, they know how to play with words in your sight turn in and eat a morsel of bread and he pressed them and they turned in and he gave them water and they washed their feet and he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent. And Abram ran and took a calf of tender and good, and he hastened to kill it and gave it to his servant Eliezer to dress. And Abraham came to Sarah into the tent, and he said to her, Make ready quick thee measures, a fine meal needed, and make cakes over to cover the pot and containing the meat. And she did so. 
And Abraham hastened and brought therefore them butter and milk and beef and mutton, that's deer, or should I say lamb, beef and lamb, and gave it before them and to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done. You know, I, I, got, I got to feed these guys. I got to feed them. See, this was the hospitality of Abraham. And, and, and many people of those days, this was their hospitality. It's not just southern hospitality. This was the hospitality of those even, those who were of Shem, of Shem and of Abram. Now, he said, eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done. And they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to thee according to the time of life. And Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Whoa. Yes, that was a mind blower. And then after the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent. And in those days, all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked. And sinful, I believe even this day, even more so. And against the I am, and they provoke the I am with their abominations. You're talking about the so-called, today it is so cunning. If you do not watch and understand what the scriptures are saying, they are cunning. And some of them are deceived by devils and, and steadily being deceived. And they sound as though they're true. And the I am with their abominations, and they strengthen an aging abominate abominably and scornfully before the I am. Now, this is how wicked they are. And their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before the I am. And they had in their land a very extensive valley. A valley? Think about that. About half. Now, in the back, if you see in the background, there is a, some ruins. This is the city of David, Jerusalem. This is Judah. This is the land of Judah and Benjamin around in these areas, the North Kingdom, should I say. This, where the split happened was the North. Judah and Benjamin remained together. And then you had the most in the South. They were carried away, especially those of notability and skills and all that. They were carried away in the poor left. So there was some of the southern Israelites still left in the land at the time of the of the prophet. Yes. And they strengthened and age and abominably and scornfully before the I am and their wickedness and crimes in those days great before the I am. And they had in their land very extensive valley about half a day's walk. And in it there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage surrounding the water. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in a year with their wives and children and all belonging to them. And they rejoiced there with trembles and dances. Now, who were they playing this to? Now, we understand of Miriam, she took the tremble and repeated after Moses the song. And they, be, they began to dance before the Most High. But then who and in the time, verse 14, in the time of rejoicing, they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbor's wives. Now, some of these cultures, even in Africa, they do this. They still do this to this day. Let you know who they really are. Hamites. Still carrying on traditions of their ancestors. And some, the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. And each man saw his wife and daughter, even the Eskimos, so-called Eskimos, these, those up in Alaska or wherever you would say the cold weather is, do the same. And did not say a word. And as they did so from morning to night, they after returned home, each man to his house and each woman to her tent. And so always did four times in the year. In other words, these people were in adulterous affairs with each other. Didn't care. It was their culture. It's the way they did things. They were wicked. These were the, the their mind incested with devils. Now, verse 16. Now, when a stranger came into their cities and brought goods in which he had purchased with, with a view 
to dispose of there, the people of those cities would assemble men and women, children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he had brought into the land. Now, this is the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what he's giving you a brief history of what led up to the day of destruction. He's giving you just little tidbits. And this is put in nice ways. Verse 17. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, what is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach him one by one. Each one would show him a little which he took and taught him, saying, I only took it. In other words, they've taken the stuff of the man. They, they steal it. And then they divide it amongst each other. And then they boldly come before him and say, what? I only took that little which thou didst give me. He didn't give them nothing. They stole it. And when he heard this from them all, they all walked up. You give me this little. Or you give me this little. In other words, making the man think that he was crazy. But they stole all his goods. This is, this is the cohesion they had between one another. In wickedness. And he would arise and go forth them in sorrow and bitterness of soul. And when they would all arise and go after him and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. That's one of them. Now, here's another one. He said, now, there was a man from the country of Elam who was leisurely going on the road and seated upon his ass, which carried a fine mantle of diverse colors. In other words, a blanket over his donkey. He had a blanket. When you say mantle, it's like a blanket. You know, you can wear it as a cape or whatever. Usually it would be a blanket. They will wear it around their necks and they will sleep in that same thing. Yes. Now, of divers colors. And the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. Now, you, you see these Zorro movies where they have these capes and stuff. They're nothing but blankets to sleep with. They carry upon their back. When they, be after, when they get tired, they'll take it and they'll wrap themselves in it for warmth. Some, I mean, security blanket or what you want to call it. It's carried. This is this is the reason for what you would think is a cape. Now, even Superman had his own blanket. <laughs> now, uh, verse 19. And the man was on his journey passing through the street of Sodom. And the sun set in the evening and he remained there in order to abide during the night. But no one would let him into his house. And at that time there was in Sodom a wicked and mischievous man, one skillful to do evil. And his name was he died. Oh, we about to hit something here now. Verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveler in the street of the city. And he came to him and said, whence comest thou and where dost thou go? We speak in an old English, though. And the man said to him, I am traveling from Hebron to Elam, where I belong. In other words, he was a citizen of Elam. And as I pass, the sun set and no one would suffer me to enter his house. Now, they knew what they were doing. Though I had bread and water and also straw and poverty for my ass, I am short of nothing. I just want a place to sleep. I got what I need. Just, I, just let me go in your house so I could be away from the animals and critters and stuff. And, ha and Hadad answered and said to him, all that I shall want shall be supplied by me. But in the street thou shalt not abide all night. Because he know they were wicked people. Okay, he, he was wicked himself. And Hadad brought him to his house and he took off the mantle from his ass which the cord, with the cord and brought them to his house. And he gave the ass straw and provender while the traveler ate and drank in Hadad's house. And he abode there until that night. And in the morning, the traveler rose up in the early to continue his journey when Hadad said to him, wait. Now, this is historically. This is historically showing you what led up to what God has caused, that they have brought the wrath of the Most High even in fire to come upon them. And just think in these latter days, what will happen? Look at them and consider the evil that these people have done that even the book of Jasher have described in great detail. I mean, even above all the books that describe this event. The 66 books only give you a brief history. Wait, comfort thy house with a morsel of bread. 
cover their heart with a morsel of bread and then go and and the man did so. And he remained with him and they both ate and drank together during the day when the man rose up to go. And then Hadad said unto him, verse 25, behold, now the day is declining. Thou hast better had us better remain all night than thy heart may be comforted. And he pressed him so that he tarried there all night. And on the second day, he rose up early to go away. When Hadad pressed him, saying, comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread and then go. And he remained and ate with him. So the second day and then the man rose up to continue his journey. Verse 26. And he says, Hadad said to him, behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort thy heart in the morning. Rise up early and go thy way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass while he was saddling his ass. The wife of Hadad said to her, now you see what he's doing. Now the story gets better. He said, he saddled his ass, and while he was saddling his ass, the wife of Hadad, she was wicked too, said to her husband, Behold, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. Now they never asked for anything. And now he shall go away from us without giving anything. And Hadad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass and to go, and he asked Hadad to give him the cord and mantle to tie it upon the ass. Now remember, he came in with the cord and the mantle that was real beautiful. And Hadad said to him in verse 29, what sayest thou? And he said to him, that thou as my Lord shall give me the cord and the mantle made with divers colors, which thou conceal with thee in thy house to take care of it. And Hadad answered and said, the man, this is the interpretation of thy dream. Oh, now he's going to tell him that what you had was a dream. <laughs> this is the wickedness of this place. Now, he said, the cord which thou didst see is mean that life will be lengthened. <laughs> you, do, you, do, you, do you understand why, how, how we sometimes get these, kook, these kookies or kooks or what you would call of prophetess and prophets and mediums and those readers of the times they come with different things so this man took he stole his, his stuff now he's going to tell him he dreamed about it <laughs> come on him and, and he said that life will be lengthened out like the cord having seen the mantle colored with all sorts of colors means that thou have thou shall have a vineyard in which thou will plant trees of all fruits and the traveler answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awake when I gave thee the cord. <laughs> In other words, they're trying to make you seem, isn't this the way some of our, our business people would do us? Some people would do business with you and make you seem like you didn't give them enough or you didn't give them nothing or they've done so much work or cheat you out of stuff and and I mean you're giving them something for nothing and they promise to never give. What they promised. Business. It's wickedness. Now, this wick their wickedness of today is much more deceitful and cunning and than then back then. Now, here we go again. Not so, my lord. This is just one story out of many, which thou takest off the ass to put them by for me. And had that answer says, Surely I have told thee in the interpretation of thy dreams. See, he's gaslighting him now. He's really gaslighting. He says, in thy dream and in this good, the dream is this interpretation thereof. And now the sons of men, give me four pieces of silver, which is in my charge for interpreting the dream. For if and of thee, I only I require thee pieces of silver, three pieces of silver. In other words, now I'm going to tell you, you gave me the blanket. I'm stole it. I stole the blanket. Now I'm telling you, you dreamt about the blanket and the cord. And now, because I tell you about the dream, you're going to pay me for the dream that I interpreted for you. Evil. Evil. That's why we must always heed the law, statutes, judgments, and ordinances of the Most High. Forget about all the rest. For all wrath of God has come because of our transgressions against his statutes, ordinance, laws, and commandments. This is what God cherishes. 
because in it is righteousness and fairness. All the historical things are good and they're do it good to know who you are and to come to a, a, an assumption or a, a, a summarizing that I will follow the most high because I know I am of his seed, even the seed of Jacob. But the fact is, even those that the most high is good, he's a good God. And I will follow him regardless. Now, these things are different. Now, here, here are we now. And the sons of men give me four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams. Now, he's deceiving him. This is what you call swindling. Swindling, yes. And of three only, I require thee three pieces. And the man was provoked at the words of Haddad and cried bitterly, and he brought Haddad to speak to Shak, judge of Sodom. And the man laid his cause before Shadak the judge, and when Haddad replied, saying, It is not so, but this is the matter which stands in judge. And the judge says to the traveler, This man Haddad telleth the truth, for he is famed in the cities for the accurate interpretation of dreams. And the man cried at the word of the judge, Don't you mind you're so like green acres? <laughs> Uh, we call it Haney, the Haney, the, the, the store man would always deceive the. <laughs> for so those of you my age, you know what I'm talking about. And he said, now, not so, my Lord, for it was in the day that I have gave him the cord and manna, which I was. Which was upon the ass in order to put them by his house. And they both disputed before the judge and once and the one saying thus the matter was and the other one. Declaring otherwise. In other words, one says, I didn't. He dreamed. He didn't give me nothing. And had I said to the man, give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretations of dreams and I will not make any allowance and give me the expense of the four meals that thou didst eat in my house. Oh, never charged him. And the man said to Haddock, truly, I will pay thee for what I ate in thy house. Now, he was a just man. Only give me the cord and mantle. That means that, that meant a lot to him. Which thou didst conceal in thy house. And Haddock replied before the judge and said to the man, Did I not tell thee the interpretation of the dreams? And the cord means that thy days shall be prolonged like a cord. And the mantle that thou wilt have a vineyard. Which thou wilt plant all kinds of fruit trees. A false prophet. Now, this is proper interpretation of thy dream. Now, give me four pieces of silver that I require as compensation, for I will make thee no allowance. And the man cried at the words of Haddai, and they both crawled before the judge. And the judge gave orders to his servants who drove them rashly from the house. And with that, we're going to continue this. Peace. <laughs>